with the CIA and an MSNBC senior national security and intelligence analyst. Thank you so much for being with us. Of course, uh, a lot of critique, a lot of discourse around Israel's massive intelligence failure that led to the attack one week ago. Since then, of course, reports that both Egypt, the United States had passed on reports that warned that at least some sort of attack was possible. Your thoughts on what we've seen so far regarding Israel's failure, the intelligence failure to see this coming? Well, Alicia, frequently uh, intelligence agencies pick up some indications that a, an attack may be brewing, but they lack the specific details in terms of you know when, where, and the tactics that are going to be used. But when you get that type of strategic warning that something may be happening, what you try to do is augment your defenses, increase your ability to be able to respond quickly to such an attack. But clearly, Israel was caught totally unawares. The Israeli defense forces were not augmented along the border. I didn't see a lot of additional uh, Israeli military near that music festival where so many individuals mm -hmm. were slaughtered by Hamas. And so even though there was not the specificity that is frequently needed in order to stop an attack, uh, the fact that the Israelis uh, were not able to anticipate what Hamas was going to do and did not take the necessary precautions along the border, try to strengthen their forces, I, clearly this was a failure on multiple dimensions in Israel. Right. There was the, the, the failure that is behind us. And then there is, of course, the, the question of the role that intelligence has to play in the days and the weeks ahead. The United States confirming American citizens are among those who've been taken hostage by Hamas in Gaza. If you would pull back the curtain for us, give us a sense of the role U.S. intelligence can play in determining the extent to which they can help and find those hostages. Well, I think there are two main things. One is that uh, U.S. intelligence will look back into their databases and see whether or not there's any information in there about Hamas's plans and, and future attack plans, and to make sure that that is going to be processed immediately and shared with its their Israeli counterparts. But in addition, I'm sure that there's been a surge of U.S. intelligence capabilities, both technical as well as human sources, to try to provide some insight into what Hamas is now planning to do and how they going to respond to what seems like it's going to be an inevitable Israeli military incursion into Gaza. So this surge is critically important. It's not just the United States. I'm sure other countries, uh, Euro European services and others, are trying to provide the Israelis with everything they need. They're asking the Israelis what they need, but uh, sending uh, some U.S. naval vessels uh, near the coast, uh, but also doing some things from overhead. Uh, clearly, uh, this is an ongoing nightmare for Israel and for the Palestinians, and I'm sure U.S. intelligence is doing all it can to, uh, again, increase its ability to have some sense of what Hamas, where these uh, militant leaders, terrorist leaders are, and what they may be planning in the future. Do you have a sense of, of whether or not Israel has defined what success on this mission looks like, what success, what the objective is as it relates to Hamas? Well, I think they have uh, several objectives. One is to destroy the, uh, Hamas's terrorist-making capability, as well as their ability to continue to launch rockets onto Israeli soil, which is happening. I think they want to try find and kill the uh, Hamas leaders who are responsible for these horrific attacks. But also, and fundamentally, I think that they're trying to ensure that they can find where the hostages are and do whatever they can to recover them safely and bring them out. That's why I'm sure Israeli special forces are in Gaza. They are looking for any indications, any information that will give them a sense of where these hostages are being held or how they're being moved around in Gaza. Uh, but so it's a multidimensional challenge that the Israelis have, while at the same time trying to prevent the further loss of innocent Palestinian life. It's an impossible balance what Israel is trying to do. And I don't think they have a sense of what's going to happen the day after uh, they are able to uh, mitigate this Hamas uh, threat. Uh, but just like prior to 9-11, when uh, and after 9-11 attacks here in the States, we decided that there was an imperative to go out and to destroy al-Qaeda. We didn't know where that was going to go. It wound up 20 years in Afghanistan. I'm sure the Israelis don't want to reoccupy Gaza. But again, the future for Gaza and for the Palestinians is very, very uncertain at this point. Former CIA director John Brennan, as always, thank you so much for your time. Our coverage of the war between Israel and Hamas continues after a quick break.